morning. It's Easter Sunday. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to our worship for Boshagri Victoria Park Church on this special day in the Christian calendar. As always, let's begin with prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, on that first morning there was a sense that all was lost. You had been laid in a tomb, sealed by a stone, dead. The disciples had watched the suffering on the cross when you breathed your last, saying, It is finished. A spear thrust into your side and your body taken down from that cross. But suddenly on arrival in the, at the tomb that day, they found you risen from the dead, our living Lord. For us too, death might seem the end of everything, the end of our hopes and dreams, the final matter we must face. So today we come to you with such a sense of thankfulness for that message of Easter. That assurance that life is not in vain, that faith isn't futile. So today, risen and living Lord, lead us from death to life. Lord Jesus, when we stop and consider how far and how much you suffered for us, how many times we still fail you, we know that often our faith has no more commitment than what those first disciples had at that point and we fall short too easily. So today, even as Easter people, we come seeking forgiveness. Lord, forgive us. Allow us to know and understand how what you did on the cross assures us of that atonement for sins. And Lord, today we turn and pray to you that this new morning can be a new chance for us too, that we can stick with that understanding of the resurrection from the dead, that we are born again and coming to faith in you. So Lord, take our lives and help us through what we will face, to know that in the valleys of suffering, when we walk in the shadow of death ourselves, God is present in our lives, that you Lord Jesus walk with us, alive as our risen Saviour now and that your love for us is indestructible. And so we offer these prayers this morning in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Matthew chapter 28 verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said, and they came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Amen. It's Easter Sunday, Easter Day. The day we remember the woman going to the tomb, finding the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. It's this incredible story. Let's just take a moment to look at the story and look at the facts and the evidence and be sure we can believe this. By all accounts, the stone was far too big to be rolled away. Perhaps people think that Jesus didn't really die on the cross at all. He'd just been unwell. After all, it's a bit much to really think that someone could die and then come to life again three days later. So let's think about this. How can we be sure that Jesus was dead? Well, firstly, God tells us it's going to happen. Let's look at the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God. He was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. These are words that told us that Christ was to come, and they were written about 700 years beforehand. God keeps his promises. Secondly, there's a very simple fact. Jesus was crucified by the Romans. These people were experts in death. They knew how to kill. They would have been very sure that day that Jesus was dead on the cross. Crucifixion was what the Romans were good at. And thirdly, we have the fact that the Gospels tell us. These accounts written down after they'd been going around verbally for a while and once people had corroborated and been sure of them, they wrote them down for posterity. And they all tell us that Jesus was seen after he was raised from the dead. And not just the Gospels, we have the account from Paul in Corinthians. He tells us that Jesus appeared to Peter, then the Apostles, and then to over 500 men who were going around talking about what they'd seen. Let's not be here having any doubt that Jesus died on the cross and that he rose again three days later. And then we may ask, why? Why would an innocent man go through that? And it's quite simple. We have to know our Bibles. We have to go back to the beginning of our Bibles. God creates a perfect world with Adam and Eve. And then things go wrong. Humankind separated from God. And we have this thing that we, call, that we call sin. All our feelings, all the things we've done wrong. They separate us from a full relationship with God. All the sins I've committed, all the things that you've done wrong. When Jesus died, he took those sins, our sins, to the cross. It was these sins that were nailed to the wood that day. Jesus took the punishment for us in our place. It was for these sins that Jesus undertook that level of pain. And in understanding this, we would want him to be our saviour and to pray to him. But it's not about just making that prayer and then forgetting it. It's about realising what he did and then turning to decide to make him king in your life, to make him 
not just saviour but king and living your life in a way that's in accordance with what Jesus demands from us in the Bible. And it can seem like a lot to ask a life in obedience to him. But then just think what he did when he died for you to give you that hope of a relationship with Jesus and eternal life. If you think that life is futile, if you sometimes think that life is no point, if there's nothing worth going on for, if all the non-believers, the atheists in this world tell you that this is all there is and you might as well just give up, remember that Jesus rose from the dead and offers us eternal life. Life is worth the living just because he lives. But wait a minute. What if we don't believe this? What if it is all really a big mistake? What if we've all been fooled by this message in the Bible? Let's look at this for a minute. Let's see the evidence, perhaps, or the theories for a different view. Well, we could read that the Jewish priests and elders bribed the soldiers to put out a false story that the soldiers simply fell asleep and the followers of Jesus took the body. We can see that in the Gospels as well. And if that had been true and that had happened, then the disciples simply wouldn't have been determined all these years later to stand up and tell the Gospel message and pay for these beliefs with their own lives. At first, they were afraid of their own lives. After they had seen Jesus die, they thought that they would be next. When they meet, the doors are locked. But when Jesus appears after the resurrection, it all changes. If it was a hoax, the story would have come out and they would simply have given up. Or perhaps the Romans or the Jews took the body away from themselves. That might have happened. Well, they were afraid some would, someone would take the body. That's why the Jews asked the Romans to put a guard over the tomb to make sure nothing is tampered with, that the body is effectively secure in that tomb. If they wanted to take the body, they could simply have done it for themselves and hid it, and there would never have been any, any thought or talk of resurrection. And if there had been any sort of uprising, all they would have had to do is produce this body, and that would have been the end of it. So that doesn't make sense either. Perhaps, thirdly, Jesus hadn't really died. Perhaps when he was on the cross, he was simply in some sort of coma. Well, if that was the case, then after all that time on the cross, and then all that time in the tomb, when his body was recovered, he would have been in such a state that they would have been desperate to get to a doctor. They would have been desperate to give Jesus help. But when we read the gospel accounts, that isn't what happens. They simply fall at his feet and worship him. That's not the sign of somebody that's been uh, lying in a coma for days. And then fourthly, what if the disciples had simply had hallucinations? What if they just imagined it all? Well, let's go back to that story that Paul tells us in Corinthians. There were over 500 men alone in Jerusalem, 500 people and more walking around talking about the fact that they'd seen Jesus risen from the dead. They'd really seen him there. They couldn't all have been hallucinating. And even then, even if they had, it doesn't explain the issue of the empty tomb. If Jesus hadn't been risen from the dead, the body would still be there. So none of these accounts really make sense. What does make sense to believers is that Jesus rose from the dead. We find out that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary go to the tomb and there was an earthquake and an angel of the Lord came from heaven and rolled away the stone and the appearance of the angel had completely shocked the guards and the angel turns to the woman and says, do not be afraid. As Price makes clear in his writing about this, this is not something symbolic. This resurrection is a literal and physical fact. It's this fact that makes, that allows our whole faith to, to make sense. If Christ had not been raised, then all, all that we do would have been useless. 
but it's not useless. We know he lives because all these witnesses, the disciples, the 500 or so people and more in Jerusalem, all going about talking about it. It's not a figment of the imagination and it's what allows us to think of our future, our eternal life in heaven and being with Jesus there. So today, don't get hoodwinked by all the atheist talk that, that goes around, all the different stories that perhaps the, the, the guards took him or they fell asleep and Jesus' disciples took him or there were hallucinations. We've looked at these issues and none of them actually stack up. None of them could be the facts. What really happened was that Jesus died. He died for you and he rose again on the third day. Trust Jesus as Lord and Saviour and we're called to go out and tell others the good news too. This is the reality, it's our version of events. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter.
In a world where hopes are so often dashed and dreams are broken, we remember today the faith in the future you brought to so many, both through your coming and your resurrection from the dead. Lord Jesus, where faith has died and dreams have faded, may hope flower again. We remember how Mary and Joseph looked forward to your birth, how shepherds and wise men were in awe at this Christ child, how your disciples and crowds flocked to hear you and give thanks, convinced that you were indeed the Messiah, the long-awaited Deliverer. Lord Jesus, where faith has died and dreams have faded, may hope flower again. We remember how that vision of the future was shattered by events to follow, your pain, humiliation, suffering and death, an end to dreams for so many. Lord Jesus, where faith has died and dreams have faded, may hope flower again. We remember the news that the tomb was empty, the stone rolled away, your body gone. Despite it all, your followers could scarcely bring themselves to hope and to once again risk faith. Lord Jesus, where faith has died and dreams have faded, may hope flower again. But then we remember how you finally appeared in all your glory in the garden, in the upstairs room, on the Emmaus road and by the Sea of Galilee, when the dream was born again. Lord Jesus, where faith has died and dreams have faded, may hope flower again. Lord Jesus, a world is waiting, hurting and longing, searching for hope, crying out for meaning hungry for some reason to believe in the future. Come again in your living power and bring new life to all. Lord Jesus, for faith has died and dreams have faded, may hope flower again. Amen. Thanks for being with us for worship today. And now, may the grace, mercy and peace of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love now and evermore. Amen.